Welcome to this week's End of Days Update, coming to you from Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is my lovely little granddaughter, Ella, and this is my bold and beautiful grandson, Jude. So great to have them here in Tulsa with us. Uh, we're having such a great time. Boy, last week we had such a great time in Fort Worth with Joey Roberts and uh, Rapture School. So much to get into about the coming of the Lord. People seem to be so excited and into it. Had a great time, wonderful time with them. We're going to do some more, so make sure you, we'll, we'll announce it more ahead of time. And we're going to be with Joey up in New England uh, for two different meetings in May. So we'll have a great time up there then. Actually, three different locations. So we'll get back with those as well. So I think I lost Jude there. He was ready to preach and was going to sing a new song. but uh, And Ella's excited as well. Uh, okay, okay. Here, Colleen, why don't you come grab Ella or Lauren? This is my daughter, Lauren. I'm so blessed. Here's Lauren right here. Thank you, sweetie. Yay, she lasted a little ways. We're coming to you every week to look at the different things that point to the coming of the Lord, specifically the gathering of nations for the Ezekiel 38 war. Because, you know, the rapture's signless, but the second coming has tons of signs. Like, we get into some of them every week, but there's about 50 main ones, and we get into about 10 or 12. But uh, it's intriguing that Jesus never rebuked the crowd but one time. He rebuked the Pharisees over and over and over again. The only time he ever rebuked the crowd was over, said, hey, he said, hey, you can tell what the weather's going to be, but you don't know your hour of your visitation. So he wants us to know the time. And I hear people say, why should you get into end time events? Well, tell a quarterback to not show him the play clock at the end of a game. No, you're looking at the play clock because the clock is winding down. The plays are more crucial. Uh, you can make mistakes at the beginning of the game, but you can't make mistakes at the end. So we, we look at these things every week that's so blatant blatantly point to the coming of the Lord. I mean, specific things are happening every single week. And I know we get into a lot, but man, there's so much happening around Israel. So it's so exciting that soon we'll see Jesus. So we can get into this not as an escape theology, but an accelerate theology. So let's look at what's happened around the uh, Middle East this last week. So many reports in the newspapers. Iran seems to be up to such strange stuff. I mean, America this week talked about entering into a new negotiations for a nuclear deal. Iran completely turned it down without even talking about what the stipulations were. And Iran has completely circumvented the sanctions. We talked about two weeks ago how their tankers are over in China and how literally China is buying 80% of Iran's oil circumventing the sanctions. So Iran's basically saying we can do whatever we want to do. Along with that, you had Iran this last week do several different things that were provocative. Uh, uh, many things that are subversive, but one thing was just right out in the open. They fired rockets at the Kurds. Uh, some of the Iranian rebels uh, firing missiles at the Kurds. So, I mean, it's, the Kurds have been having a tough time in the northern part of Syria because you got Turkey attacking them seemingly on a weekly basis. Then you had Russia coming down and attacking uh, some of the Kurdish troops the last couple of weeks. So you've had uh, three different uh, nations coming after the Kurds. Why? That's in the area where Palmyra is. That's in the area where the Assyrian is from. And that's a little technically in the area where the Antichrist's name comes from. He's called the Assyrian. So uh, you have three of these nations that are going to be mentioned in the Ezekiel 38 war uh, having military activities right there, which is pretty remarkable. Of course, Israel uh, doesn't have a prime minister yet again. Neither one can find form a government. Netanyahu didn't have had two, shy, two votes shy of being able to form a government. He said he might form a minority government, but that doesn't look like that'll happen for a while. So, so much is up in the air about that. Then you had that tanker that was blocking the Suez Canal, which pretty well shows you how quickly one thing can happen to stop oil supply to the whole world. So thank God that was not the only oil supply, but it stopped so much uh, traffic going through the Suez Canal. Ships were having to go through the southern part of Africa to get the, their cargo out. So there was about 300 ships waiting in line for that as well. Thing that came out this week too that just so intrigues me about the Middle East is there was a, a big report about the Temple Mount and how the holiest of holies and the the temple was not where the the dome of the rock is and i haven't gotten into that at all but we there's been so much reports and so much scripture about the holiest of holies really being down in where the city of david is not even being on the temple mount where the temple mount was an old russian garrison so there's going to be more come out about that but you'll notice it gets trickled out uh, point by point because that is such a radical statement to say that i do like that they found uh, more archives out where the dead sea scrolls were uh, they're finding more and more things showing that uh, Israel has a tie to the land. It's interesting that the UN came out saying that Jerusalem doesn't have a tie to Israel. They're trying to take Jerusalem away from Israel being an international city. There's a lot of pressure about that seemingly every single week. You had Russia, had three submarines, came through the Arctic Circle, uh, up through the ice. Went, the nuclear submarines with ballistic missiles popped out at, at one time. Then you had Soviet MiGs fly over showing that they uh, were prepared to escort them at all. So you have... Uh, 
Interesting enough, Turkey doing things, Russia doing things. Then you have China. One, three of our generals came out this last week saying it looks like China is literally ready to attack Taiwan. So you've got things in the North China Sea because the Bible says the kings of the east will come across the Euphrates River. And then you had the Euphrates River being dammed up by ISIS a few years ago. So all these little things are adding up together, specifically the things for the Ezekiel 38 war. It's a, a, a amazingly clear the nations that don't attack Israel have been making peace with Israel in the last couple of years. The ones that are, are doing crazy stuff every single week. So it tells us that war is really soon. So what happens? The rapture happens. That war happens just after that. So with the rapture soon, second coming's uh, several years from now, and I'm not giving any dates for the rapture, but man, when you see all the signs of the second coming, you can tell we're very, very close. So it's super Super exciting. Jesus said, lift up your heads. Your redemption is drawing nigh. Remember all the information is because he loves you. He wants you blessed. He wants you encouraged. He wants you strengthened. So we do this every week. We go to what, what makes it blatant for us. Supernaturally blatant is the word of God. Number one, Israel made a nation. Number two, Jerusalem won back. Jesus said the generation that sees those two events will not pass away till all is fulfilled. But then you got the Hebrew language restored. You got the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You got the fertility of the land of Israel. You got the revival of the Roman Empire. You got the Temple Mount Institute ready to have sacrifices. You have 172 different species of predatory birds. Amazing. These happened this last year, which are crazy. You had fish show up in the Dead Sea. Ezekiel prophesied that 2,700 years ago. So you had that. You had the foxes show up on the Temple Mount. That's Lamentations 5:18. You have the ritual baths around the Temple Mount fill up with water. You have the Sea of Galilee filling up with water. You have Iksak Kaduri prophesying in 2005 that Israel will be ruled by two Benjamins. You had Benjamin Netanyahu, Benjamin Gantz this last year ruling because of COVID, jointly ruling because of COVID. So tangible physical things, many, many, many more that you just don't have time to get into in eight to ten minutes. But after that, you got the signals. You had blood red moons on Passover and Tabernacles. That's remarkable, having four in a row on Passover and Tabernacles. When's the last time you had that? NASA calls it a tetrad. 1967, when Jerusalem was won back. 1948, when Israel's made a nation. And 1492, at the Edict of Expulsion, when the Jews were kicked out of Spain. Pretty amazing. And then this last year, you had the Bethlehem Star. That's amazing in itself. At the birth of Jesus, those three planets came together. The constellation was Virgo. This last year, they came together again. Bethlehem Star, Jupiter, Regulus, and Venus. Constellation was Leo. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Then you had Mercury do a flyby of the sun, went down directly over the Temple Mount at sundown. The moon formed a sickle. The planets formed a sickle. And uh, Orion changed this instrument to hammer. He had hammer and sickle on the same day. That's Russia's symbol. So we have all these things that are blatantly clear that we're super close to the Lord coming back. I hear people go, well, if you talk about the coming of the Lord all the time, you'll just get everybody's hopes up. Duh. It's the hope that purifies us even as we're pure. So the preaching on the coming of the Lord is for us to accelerate in what we're called to do. We have to finish off the book of Acts. The Bible promises us in James chapter 5, double of what the early church had. So we, we have a lot of work to do in a short period of time. So let's, let's, let's go for it. Let's get it done. So soon we'll see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords face to face, eyes as a flame of fire, feet like a defined brass, voice of many waters. Ella just liked it when I talked about the eyes as a flame of fire. Man, we're about to see Jesus face to face, the protocol to see the King. Have a great, wonderful Easter this weekend. This weekend we celebrate Jesus being raised from the dead, going to the cross on Friday, raising on Sunday. Aren't we blessed that our King overcame death, hell, and the grave? Have a wonderful Easter with your family. After that, let's accelerate the pace. Let's do as much as we can, do the will of God. Jesus is coming so soon. Let's go for it. Uh, help your local church. Help your local pastor. This is it. Jesus is about to come. Have a blessed, awesome week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Have a wonderful Easter weekend. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks for joining us today at the End of Days Update. If you'd like to be notified every time there's a new post, just go to the edu at josephmorris.com and subscribe to receive email alerts. If these posts and updates have been a blessing to you, please consider making a one-time donation to help get the message out or even becoming a monthly partner with Joseph Morris Ministries. Thanks again for tuning in to the EDU, and we'll see you next week.